My first question is, I would like you to describe your writing routine if you have one. I don't have much of a routine. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what the weather's like. If oh. it's a nice day, I go out with the dog and I come back and I work on the garden. Uh, if it's pouring with rain, I might write. Um, if I'm feeling bored, I go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> or I have friends around. So, um, they, I used to be very disciplined back in the day, and I used to write all day every day, but I'm afraid I've got the old for that now, and I don't do it anymore. <laughs> so sometimes you might have to wait a while for a new book. <laughs> when in doubt, move to England so you can write when it rains. <laughs>
an old pier and you, you see boats and you see water skiers and all sorts of things. So I try to avoid looking out the window. Yeah, I put a chair left in the toilet. But you just think of my toilet when you're there. At least you know I don't have to run to the window. <laughs> you will all see this. No. Oh, no. no. I get some ideas about people and then I just sort of think about the character and what they might do and what they're capable of doing. And um, you know, you'd be quite scared if you think of some of the things I think of, you know, a million ways to break someone's legs or you know, set fire to a house or um, no, but you know, I've got plenty of writing friends who've got post-it notes all over their office with different ideas. I don't do that. I just start and then and carry on, you know. And sometimes I have to scrap bits because it doesn't work. But that's the beauty of computers. You can go back and put something else in. And okay. Do you ever doubt your story or abandon your books? I've never actually abandoned one. But I certainly doubt every single book I write. Um, <laughs> until my editor's written it, read it, I never think it's any good. She said to me when I gave her the first, about the, about the third book, she said to me, I wonder when you'll write the crap one. <laughs> she said, all writers write crap books sooner or later. So each time I give it to her, I say, this is the crap one. And it's a long-standing joke now. And I, I, I suspect she wouldn't even tell me now if it was. <laughs> you know, after 25 books, they, they stick with me and produce it anyway. But it's when she says comments of it, and she's very good at bringing out things in it, you know, because sometimes there are things that are wrong, you know, uh, and which would work better if it was a different way around and things like that. And basically, I feel like I'm the mother giving birth and she's the midwife, and she does the good stuff that turns it into a really good story. So, but no, I never, never really got the confidence all the way along. It, it is quite nerve-wracking. But when you finally get the proof pages and it's a proper book, Sometimes I'm reading that and I think this is rather good. <laughs> <laughs> don't get too big headed, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> might not be able to get in the toilet door. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, um, when you wrote your first novel, did you ever think you would end up with so many? No, I don't think I did. Um, Georgia, the very first book, I mean, it took seven years to get it published. And it went through every major publishing and I, every major publisher, and I rewrote it and rewrote it again and again. And actually, the biggest success we had with it was here in South Africa. I don't think anyone knows that. You know, We're not was, people. Yeah. And, you know, it's a mixed race girl, and people said to me, oh, it won't sell. They, they only had three black models to show me. And I was appalled that yeah, at that time, that was the way it was, that, you know, that they weren't keen on. They didn't like the idea of it being set in the 60s in squalid surroundings where people keep coal in the bath. And with a black person in it, they weren't keen on that. But I just ignored that because she was a musician and I was married to a musician during the 60s. And I know that most of the best musicians in the world a black man, and so you're bloody well going to have a black man. <laughs> if you don't like it, too bad. But my sister, bless her, who's, you know, she rereads it every year on her birthday because I gave Georgia the same birthday as her. That's her treat in January. She reads it again. But no, I never thought. I, I sort of was amazed. I mean, I sometimes have to pinch myself and think, when did all this happen? You know, how did all those books get done? But that was the start of it all, and. Um, I'm very, very happy. I still love Georgia. She's, and there is a real Georgia that worked for me, and she's still my friend, and she's 50 now, and um, we always laugh about it. She says, oh, Mom, oh, oh Leslie, that book's so schmaltz. And, and like, I can't sing anyway. And I said, yeah, you've got the face. You look as if you could sing. It's lovely. Okay. What annoys you the most about writing? Just the fact it takes so long. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be great if you could just plug in the computer and say, I'll have a blonde, blue-eyed heroine who lives in Bath, and uh, she meets this rugged guy from Cape Town who's, you know, uh, 
a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they go to somewhere up the Nile and have a torrid sex. <laughs> and you press the button and it fills in all the rest. <laughs> but do you know, a lot of people think that really happens. Yeah. And an awful lot of people actually think that happens. Um, some stupid person said to me the other day, I don't know why you've done the Tonight books, there's so many films out there. <laughs> yes. Yes. How do you think they get the stories to the films? <laughs> Because it is daunting when you start a new book and you've got, you know you've got to fill about 600 pages with something. You know. That is quite daunting. Mm. I've done one page of the next one. Thank you. It's not very good either. You have 600 pages to fix it. What do you love about writing? Was well, it the sheer, <coughs> the sheer escapism? Because uh, I sort of open up the computer and I've got my little friends to play with, you know, and I decide life and death, you know. Right, I don't like you anymore, I'm going to get rid of you. You may be poisoned, you may fall off the cliff, you may be hung. And um, that's a great feeling, it's all powerful, you know, and um, sometimes they just make me laugh as well. You know, that something comes out of them that I didn't even put in. That they, by magic, this has come out. And uh, a fine example is the next book that's coming out in hardback, with a character Grace in it. I wanted her to be a bad person, and she was going to be a villain and thing. But she, she spoke that to me, and she didn't want to be. And she is a very strange character, but, you know. And that's magical when that happens, and you feel you've found a friend, and this uh, it sounds extraordinary, perhaps I'll have to get a life. <laughs> but I'm in love with fictitious people. My favourite man of all was Etienne in, in Bell, and um, I think I ought to have him mass-produced. <laughs> I think I should start a business Etienne never likes. <laughs> Order online, Lizzie Kirsten. Um, you have worked as a nanny, you've worked in boutiques and in promotions, and as a Playboy bunny. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Which career has helped you the most to write novels? <laughs> I don't actually think any of those careers did anything for me at all because I was a, a serial jobsmith, you know, I used to go from one job to the other, you know, and I never took anything very seriously. Um, I've taken little bits of things. A promotion work probably is the thing where, because we had so many laughs, we were working with other women and, you know, whether we were working at the motor show and draping ourselves over Mercedes and in the days where I was beautiful enough to drape myself over a Mercedes. And, you know, and working in the bunny club too, where, you know, you were an, an object of desire walking about, you know. No, I never felt I was. I always felt a bit of a fraud, you know, that I shouldn't really be there. Those things are the things that are left with me. But I think it was the relationships with the other women when I was doing promotion work. I made so many good friends and we used to have so many laughs. I mean, when we were working with drink, giving them a drink, we would all get drunk. And so by the time the end of the day, <laughs> and I, I think there's something about, for all of you women, I mean, we've all got friends that we've had wonderful misspent days like that with. And uh, I think that comes across in my books. I think I like writing about friendship in books because it means a lot to me. Does that make any sense? Because I didn't actually learn anything from my career. <laughs> Good friends along the way. Yeah. So. What do you think about self-publishing? Well, when I started it was called vanity publishing. And I actually still think that that's what it is. I think that people are deluding themselves. I, I think there's a place for it. You know, that if you, you want to go ahead and you want to put something online, and yes, people are going to read it, but I don't think you're ever going to hit the big time with it. You're just going to be plodding away and getting disappointed that if you've written something that's good enough to send it to a publisher and they accept it, then, then you can count on yourself as a writer. And if you can't, 
and that, you know, I mean, I know people who put stuff online that they haven't even checked the spelling on it, and it's just a disgrace, and it actually puts everybody else in a bad light in self-publishing. That's my view on it. I think that you need to get a mainstream publisher if you want to get anywhere. Well, I'm sorry if that disappoints some people. So <laughs> I can take the bang on the head as I can. What is your best and worst writing habit? Well, my worst writing habit used to be smoking, but I kept <laughs> um, I used to smoke about 60 a day when I was sure. writing all the time, and I used to write like bilio with bags, and I sometimes would kill to have another one, but I'm not doing it anymore. Um, my best habit, I'm quite kind to my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I let him sit beside me. Yeah, it's an extraordinary question, that. I mean, what, what, you know, yeah. Stop yeah, smoking and buy a dog. There, just sit there doing this, don't you? I mean, it's all in the head and the fingers, isn't it? There isn't anything else involved, is there? All <laughs> well, the toilets. Then, yeah, one trip to the toilet or to the kettle to make a cup of tea. Which book challenged you most as a writer and why? I think Never Look Back. It was yes. the first of my big books and it's still up there as one of my favourites because I had to read over 200 American history books to do it. I did the whole of the wagon train thing, albeit in a sports car. I spent another month in New York delving around all the places looking for the old places that were there before the wagon train started and all that kind of thing. And that was the biggest challenge, but I loved every moment of writing that book. It was the book I always wanted to write and it's the book I'm most proud of actually. Um, I grew up with Wagon Train, I don't think you ever had that here in South Africa, did you? It used to be on a Monday night, mm -hmm. and um, it was stories about people on wagon trains, and, and I wrote a lot of the book from imagination, and when I got into the Midwest, it was just as I imagined, because I'd seen all those cowboy films and that when I was growing up. But yeah, I think that's the one that was the biggest challenge. Which authors have taught you the most about writing? Charles Dickens is the main one, I think. Characterisation, his wonderful, wonderful characters that you can never forget. I mean, they're fantastic names. I mean, I live by Mr. McCorber's thing, something will turn up. Um, it, they, all, they, he had the, they all had their wonderful little punchlines that they said. Um, there was great kindness in there and pathos. Um, also great cruelty in one thing or another, but, you know, um, Yes, absolutely fantastic writing and characterisation. I don't think you fault him. And absolutely gripping storylines as well. And they might be a bit old fashioned now to actually read his book. But you can see some of the films and still enjoy the magic of Dickens without actually having to read, plough through rather an old fashioned kind of writing. I can't believe I'm saying that because I still <laughs> read his books as books. But I know a lot of people find it too archaic kind of writing to read. Obviously, obviously the guy.